I think that is my key to start and introduce myself. Hi, I'm Danielle Snyder, and I am presenting and talking with you all about how to power your brain um, and work and essentially do the best you can with training and growing your brain muscles. Um, let me just pull up my PowerPoint. I wanna make sure I have the right one and then we can get started. Um, I like, uh, no matter how much I do Zoom, I still am always like, am I doing this right? Mm. Sorry, it's making me be able to do the privacies. I didn't, you know what? I'm just going to talk to you guys so much easier that way because my PowerPoint is not working. Um, so I am a pretty open person when I'm giving presentations in terms of if you have questions, feel free to type them in. And, um, or if you have, you can just speak up if I've given you permission to talk I've tried to give everyone permission to talk, but I have a half an hour to start and teach you about a really complicated subject, which is powering your brain. So I'm going to do the best I can to get through everything and help you guys understand how to use your brain more as a tool rather than something that you um, are not working with. So I like to often tell people we are on the same team as our brain, even though a lot of times we respond to our brain and our thoughts as if we're on different teams. So has, you guys aren't gonna be able to answer me, but I'm wondering if anyone has ever heard of the term, if you don't use it, you lose it. I'm sure most of you guys have. And the brain is, and is a flexible, ever-evolving set of neurons. And for a long time, I used to say like, the brain is a muscle. Turns out it's actually not a muscle. It is mostly fat and neurons, but I like to pretend and talk about it as in terms of a muscle. It's a learning machine that is always adapting, picking up on information from its environment. So when we think about a brain in terms of a muscle, we think about, well, how do we make muscles stronger? We exercise them. How often are we exercising our brain differently than the normal day-to-day -day tasks? Well, unless we're really focusing on it and doing outside tasks to make certain neuro, neuro pathways stronger, we're not doing a lot to strengthen positive aspects of our brain. We have to work on developing our mind to be flexible and a learning machine to grow what I like to call our own super brain. So you might be asking to yourself, well, Danielle, what is a super brain? Why is this important? What are you even talking about? And the first thing I like to explain to people is our brains have something called a confirmation bias, which is our brains are built to reinforce and regulate your life. Essentially, similar to how like the temperature works in our body, how we're constantly trying to regulate our temperature, either by sweating or shivering, our brain is also doing a very similar, similar thing. What I mean by that is our mind constantly filters and brings attention to information that affirms our pre-existing beliefs. Our brain doesn't like to feel uncomfortable. It likes to feel like the, the world matches internally and externally. So an example of 
a negative of a narrative you may have had since let's say childhood would be something like let's say everyone your entire life had, has always told you you're clumsy rather than saying no I'm not clumsy this is just something that people have told me it's really easy to seek out those beliefs that make that true so people normally trip but every time you trip, if you reinforce that message, oh, I'm clumsy versus it's kind of normal. I'm tripping. Everyone trips. That like would dispel that negative narrative. It's often super confusing as well because we don't realize that these are negative narratives. We just take them as facts. So I see someone in the chat wrote, my narrative is I'm not good at math. We may not even see that that's like something negative. And then we just don't try at math because it's like, well, I'm not good at math. And then we shape our worlds almost like we're wearing glasses to never trying to do it differently and never testing it because that's our belief. Our mind is that gatekeeper. It's really uncomfortable to challenge narratives, especially narratives that have been so strongly ingrained in our brains. So what I'm going to talk you through on ways to challenge this is going to feel uncomfortable. And I want you to hold space for that discomfort. One of the best ways I think about it when I'm teaching someone how to create different neural pathways in their brain is I compare it to a horse and buggy. So back in the day when people drove horse and buggies to work, they would take the same dirt road. And over time, you would grow really deep ruts in that dirt road where the wheels went. If one day the bridge broke down on your way to work and you had to go a different way, what do you think would happen with those wheels in the rut? Do you think they'd get through the rut easily or do you think they'd get stuck? They'd get stuck. Not only would they get stuck, but the horse would probably fight you, your brain would probably fight you, and you'd have a really difficult time going that different way. Well, essentially, when we start to build different narratives, the same thing is happening in our brain. We are used to, we want what is easiest and most comfortable. We like patterns. We like knowing how things are going to turn out. And when we do something different, like challenge a narrative or a belief about ourselves, it's uncomfortable and it takes work. We're not inherently lazy, but our bodies and brains are always trying to keep that homeostasis and just survive. So every time you start to challenge a narrative or the way you think about things, I want you to think about that horse and buggy and think about, oh, I'm going to have to do this a lot of times to build this new pathway because my brain and my body want to go this way. And I am now trying to control my brain and body to go this way. So how do we start to challenge these narratives? I can teach you all of this in a half an hour. So get ready, take notes, kidding. But I'm gonna give you a place to a start. The first step is acknowledging we are all on a spectrum of struggling with negative self-talk whenever we make mistakes or something doesn't go our way. It is very rare for someone to show themselves compassion or forgive themselves when they do, they make a mistake. A lot of us humans, I like to say this is our human quality, hold ourselves to such high standards. And I'm not saying we shouldn't hold ourselves accountable, but there's a difference between holding ourselves accountable and constantly beating ourselves up for making an error rather than learning from it. So 
what I want to encourage you guys to start to think of is thinking of the story that you tell yourself. This can be incredibly stressful because this, we have constantly looked for confirmation that the story we've been telling ourselves is the truth. Furthermore, our society supports outcome-based results. So if you make a mistake at work, it's not like your boss is, congratulations, you've made a mistake, now you can learn. No, from a very, very young age, we are taught that we are what we produce. And what that means essentially is that when we do an error or we make a mistake, we then have to create that belief system surrounding it, which is like, oh, see, I'm not very good at this. I actually really appreciate Albert Einstein and a lot of his quotes because he talks a lot about a fact is not a fact until it happens. And so even if our statement tells us we're gonna make a mistake and we're gonna fail, until we actually make that mistake and fail, we don't have to go by that story. We get to change it. Our mind is so incredibly strong that a lot of times when we force ourselves into believing a feeling is a fact rather than it just being a feeling. I'm gonna take a brief pause. Does anyone have any questions so far? I know I have thrown a ton at you. Okay, well, if you do at any point have a question, then, oh, I see one question, but outside of that one question, um, you can type it into the chat box. Okay, so his quote is, well, the quote that he uses that I paraphrased is, if the facts don't fit the theory, change the facts. And another quote that he uses is, it is not a fact until it comes true. So what that means to me is that we, our brains are really good at trying to predict because then we know how to respond. And it's really important that we try to stay in the moment rather than trying to predict so we know how to respond. If failure happens, we can approach it with a lot of different mindsets. I think as a society, we have um, really blacklisted and put like on that negative side effects or negative part of failure being a negative thing. When in reality, what is our, our greatest teacher, teacher in life is growing from mistakes, misunderstandings, and developing those skills to become more resilient. So when I think about challenging narratives and using the brain as, our, as a weapon of good, I think about the first step, which is identifying what is the negative self-talk. We for so often have normalized different beliefs like I spoke about in the beginning that we're not even realizing that it is negative. An example of that would be like, I just exercised for 10 minutes today. Does anyone, can anyone think of a reframe for that? You can pop it in the text box if so. And I, I mean, I guess I could start with, do you guys know what a reframe is? Yes, that's perfect. So N1000, Natasha, they wrote, I exercised for 10 minutes today. 
I did a good job. I did 10 minutes. The truth is you did, you got it done, which is awesome. It is so much better than not doing something versus I only did this. That doesn't mean that you can't hold yourself accountable to do more the next day. However, we have to celebrate successes because if we don't celebrate successes, what do you think happens the next day when we want to go exercise? What's the point? I only can do 10 minutes. I shouldn't even try. It's kind of like letting yourself off the hook. So it is Yes, exactly. Discouraged. People are popping up in the chat, chat box. It's way harder if you're judging, your all yourself, judging yourself all the time. I couldn't agree more. It is so easy to get stuck in that negative feedback cycle of why well, even try? So the first goal when you're starting to shift the narrative is being able to identify the negative self-talk. If the negative self-talk is difficult for you to identify, I am sure there are lots of people in your life who are <laughs> ready to help out. I was going to say jumping to help out because I think people are really quick at <laughs> wanting to uh, point out the things that we are struggling with. So ask someone, a trusted individual, hey, do you see any patterns in my uh, self-talk or the way I present, are there any negative statements that keep coming up? Once you kind of have started to be able to identify the negative self-talk, I want to encourage you to be curious about it. Curiosity opens the brain to better understanding it's really easy for us to start to identify the negative self-talk and go right to judgment. We either judge the negative self-talk, we judge the action, we judge the emotional response. I want to encourage curiosity. When you have negative self-talk, where does it sit in your body? Can you identify the trigger behind it? Does it show up during certain times? Are they my words or someone else's words? Can you work on meeting the negative self-talk or thought with compassion rather than judgment? When we are able to meet a negative thought with compassion and understanding, we get the opportunity to grow rather than to feel bad about ourselves. When I am presenting this work, what a lot of people have a difficult time with is saying, I'm not going to get better if I don't beat myself up for it. However, research continually shows that you can Hold yourself accountable without beating yourself up. If you beat yourself up, you get stuck in that negative cycle of feeling like crap, not being motivated, isolating, and not growing. And what we get the opportunity to do is to grow. The final step is really working on that reframe. I am really all for being realistic and not sugarcoating things, which could come as a surprise when I'm talking to you about positive mindset. However, there is a creative way to challenge a negative thought and find a truth that exists in the middle. So a truth can have more than one side and generally reality is somewhere in the middle. So, I'm gonna go back to using the math. I'm bad at math as example. 
let's say the reality is, you know what, math is not my thing. Another way to reframe that would be, I am learning how to do a better job at math. It's not negative. It's acknowledging that there's a challenge there. And it's also showing how to grow forward. You could also do another one, such as, you know, public speaking. I am horrible at public speaking. If I say something like that, how does that set me up? Well, most likely you're not going to be really good at public speaking versus public speaking is difficult for me and I am growing and learning how to do it better. One offers growth and opportunities where the other one really shuts you down. You know, I like to bring this back to the bigger picture of what society does for us, where society really has this ability to do all or nothing thinking. And all or nothing kind of makes the world a very black or white experience where there's good and bad, positive and negative. And our brains gravitate towards that because it's neat. It's really easy. It's in these two different boxes and we can kind of label things and then move forward. You either got an A or you got an F. Those, those Cs, they're complicated. And by learning to embrace a truth that exists in the middle of it gives us an opportunity to grow. So kind of the final thing that I wanna to touch on, if you guys' brains aren't exploding yet, is there's growth mindset and a fixed mindset. When we were taught in school, when, what society continually confirms in our brain is more of a fixed mindset. I'm either good at it or I'm not. When I'm frustrated, I stop trying. Feedback means I'm doing it wrong. What are the challenges to those thoughts? they keep us stuck. And like I started in the beginning of the presentation is our brain is not meant to be stuck. Our brain is meant to grow, develop, change. When we approach the world or work with a fixed mindset, we are limiting ourselves. In all truth, it is safer there because you don't generally have to fail as big if you don't try. But that also misses out on so much. It misses out on the opportunity to learn as we get older, to embrace challenges, learn through feedback, and try new things. I mean, I, you know, I'm just going to randomly throw this out there, but how many people have tried something new in the past year? It's just something to kind of percolate on because so often as we get older and we get more fixed in our way of life and fixed in the way that we do things, we stop trying new things we stop growing because we're not challenging ourselves. And right now, when we're living in a world with a lot of different challenges that we're not personally choosing to take on, it can be difficult to think and to try something new, even in terms of like how we think about our brains. I love this. Someone just wrote this in the chat. 
I started to take ballroom dance classes. That is amazing because it takes a lot of courage to try something new and to fail at it and to grow. But failure is not your enemy. Not trying is your enemy. I could keep talking at you guys, but with five minutes left, I want to give anyone an opportunity to ask a question in the chat box to make sure I answer anything that you guys may have had as I was talking. So the kind of one, one other, I'm not sure. Does everyone have, yes, everyone does have access to the chat box, but that's such a great way to challenge a, a thought that you were told. So someone in the chat box wrote that his dad always told him he was clumsy. So a fixed mindset would not try something new, would not challenge any of it would not try to ballroom dance because they had been told that they are clumsy. So often we have been told these messages and then they're reinforced. And this is our opportunity. Well, actually any day we get an opportunity to try something new and different. So to conclude, and kind of highlight all the points that I want to give you to take away a really complicated subject is that our brains are not fixed. Our brains are, well, they're not really muscles, but they're like muscles with lots of neurons that have found comfortable patterns that have served us. The patterns that have served us in the past do not have to be the ones we use moving forward. Through identifying negative self-talk, becoming more aware, being curious and reframing, we allow our brains to grow as they should. Getting people in our corner to help support us with this who also have growth mindset is a really good way to start to talk about this and become more aware. We are not our thoughts. We are not even our feelings. We have the potential to grow as humans. Thank you all for coming. I really appreciate you guys giving this the opportunity to learn something new. Hey, when I asked if someone had done anything new, this is it. You guys came here and are learning about your brain and learning how to grow. So thank you so much.